On our final day at this Filipino village, 20 volunteers are here to give a gift, a new playground. We are, thank you very, very much in the bottom of my heart. It's been uh, wonderful to us and it's amazing. They're giving the treaties here, uh, time, talents and treasure. But it ends up we are the ones who will leave with the biggest gift. We give them something tangible that fit into a container and that they could actually touch and play with, but they give us so much more. I think everybody has been touched in so many different ways. At a little ceremony, Michelle Bangus gets us all choked up. She speaks for the kids. The 14-year-old says she wants to be like us one day. I, now as a beneficiary, I want to become a benefactor someday, like you. Once the ribbon is cut, kids attack the playground. An overloaded swing and nary a pause in the slide lineup. About 42 families call Friends of Edmonton GK Village home. 150 of those kids. Now, these people were squatters, so really they didn't have a home. They were sleeping in cardboard boxes. And still, most of the parents here don't have jobs. One father said to me yesterday, so this is what it's like to have a playground. I thought those were only for the rich. Another big change is at the play school. When we first arrived, there was a pair of old jeans as a doormat, and the only toys were wrapped boxes and a diorama. But when kids arrived the next day, the room was packed with toys. A Castle Downs daycare shut down last year. All of their stuff went here. What are we gonna make? They play with a washing machine and a microwave, things they haven't seen and may never see. The thought of that is overwhelming to Cindy Zelenak. It's just something our kids take for granted and these kids just don't have these things. So it's just been just a real emotional experience to see these kids and the joys on their faces. That was echoed by other volunteers going through all the donations. Check out these soccer jerseys. Some look brand new. We are so used to having it all that, that unless it's, it's perfect, we don't want it. Every child in the village got a loot bag with the jersey, candy, toys and school supplies. Bev Gross also sold outfits for the kids but had to hand pick who would receive one. While getting our donations, we received a lot of material. I didn't know whether they would be able to sew it. So I made as many outfits as I could. I wish I could have made more, but. Danny Burrell is leaving behind his talents as an educator. This is the first time out of North America. In fact, he just took his first plane trip at the age of 41. I rode home and I said, really, it doesn't take much to be a hero. Take a couple of days of holiday, do a few meetings, a couple of fundraisers, and you come out here. And then the sense of reverence they have for us is, is absolutely amazing. And, and to these people, we're heroes, and we will be for a very long time. They're everywhere. They're following me. Like I will paper. always remember this elementary school. I went to see where some of the villagers go to school, but I quickly was mobbed. They called me Barbie. We didn't really realize the impact of our visit. They think that, uh, that they're worthy enough to be visited by these white gods from the sky, from the west, who have now have descended to their small community and giving them the, a sense of self-respect and this, this makes them feel that they're human beings, not animals. Meet Christian, a 12-year-old with golden pipes. Edmontonian Sonny Bogasov also loves to sing. The two became fast friends. Christian even forsakes the mob scrambling over pens to soak up those few remaining minutes with Sonny. I hope one day he's going to be a superstar, eh, Christian? Be good at school and get into music. High five! It is hard to leave. I leave not knowing if Luce's kids will ever go to college. I leave not knowing if Randy will ever be healthy enough to go to work. We all left a part of ourselves in that village, but it's a story unfinished, a tale yet untold. Call it coincidence, 
I call it a sign. A half an hour from the village, we drive past a parade. Funny, but it left me with hope. Hope that someday Michelle will pay it forward, becoming a benefactor like she aspires to be. And there's always hope that Sonny will hear Christian on the radio.